I am in Salada right now. The first question from Tony, you've had a lot of mental issues to deal with. Uh, leave trail for graduation, extra time off with twos, trail closures because of fire. What keeps you positive during times like those? Oh. <laughs> well, that's a really good question, Tony. Um, you know, I think just knowing that, and I, and I caught myself in this last stretch doing that. I was sitting at a water source and the water was like a little bit lower than the bank of the creek. And so I was like leaned over trying to get water and I about felt like slid down into it because the grass is kind of damp. And so I'm like, you know, cussing the grass and cussing the water and cussing the bank and whatever. And then I'm like, why am I choosing to be upset about this right now? Like I'm sitting in the middle of Colorado in a beautiful area, this field with water flowing through it. It's not a cow pond. And I'm still finding something to get aggravated about. Like it's perfect. This situation right here is perfect. And I am, it's like almost purposely finding something to be frustrated about. So I'm like, stop, like stop doing that. So I, I try to, when I find myself getting upset by something to, to take a deep breath and go, okay, could this be worse right now? Yes. How so? Have I ever experienced worse than this? Yes. Okay. Then appreciate that it's not worse than this. So I, I mean, that's, I think kind of what I do. Um, you know, yeah, my trip home wasn't what I had planned. I'd hoped to spend a little bit more quality time with the folks that I love. And I had hoped to get a lot more accomplished. Like I've got, you know, emails piling up out the wazoo and I'd hoped to get back, um, with some of those and, and it just didn't happen. It, I didn't get to do near as much as I wanted to, but you know what? I did get better and it was <clears throat> a wisdom tooth issue. It could have been a broken leg. You know what I mean? So it wasn't something that got me off trail. And then with the fire closure thing, yeah, I'm just, I'm very disappointed to not see the San Juans and to capture that. But it might be a blessing in disguise because it did put me ahead a little bit where I was so behind. So it's more like shifting my focus and trying to make it a positive thing instead of negative, if that makes sense. So, um, but yeah, that's a good question. Uh, was the mountain lion as close as it looked in the video? Yes. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, I mean, I don't. I guess I would say like 30 feet, maybe. I mean, if you were sitting here with me, I could point at something and, you know, show you it was right there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, it was, it was very close. Uh, like I came running down the hill and something jumped up, like not too far from me, like half the distance that it actually ended up running to. Um, and I was like, what was that? And I thought it was a dog, a big dog. And then I thought, no, was it a, a calf, like a cow? Cause there were cows in that area and, or there had been anyway. And, and so I kind of looked cause I just come out of the sun and in, into under the trees and I'm like, holy crap, that's a mountain lion. And, and then, you know, we had the stare down. So yeah, it was very close. <laughs> um, and I was just like, my heart was pounding and my, I was breathing hard, which I guess y'all heard in that video. So, um, uh, John says, hi Dixie, for this last section, were you on the Gut Hooks Red Trail CDT or an alternate? Okay, so when I left Creed, I was on the alternate, like if y'all look at that picture that I posted a few posts back um, of the map, you'll see that <clears throat> the blue line connects to the brown line, and we, we had to take that blue line. And then it connects in the town of Creed. And then from there, I took the brown line up to reconnect to the CDT. So um, for most of this last section, I think this was like nine, nine, a 90 mile section, something like that. I think all but about 10 miles, I was on the official CDT, so. Fred says, I know you carry water bottles. Have you ever used a bladder and what are your reasons to use or not to use a bladder? That's a great question and honestly, I've been thinking I've been toying with the idea of um, getting like one of my two liter bottle or two liter bladder scent. So I used to be on the bladder hydration hose um, system, like the <clears throat> little bite thing uh, with the tube and the bladder. It's kind of funny because I had the Sawyer squeeze with the bladders and then I would squeeze that into my hydration bladder. Um, and so after kind of weighing all that stuff and and my 
hose would get cramp, crimped up sometimes and then I wouldn't be able to drink through it. And then, I don't know, the thought of like gnawing on the same bite thing the whole time. I mean, you can replace those. But anyway, I just decided for me that it was simpler on the PCT because I was using the, um, after a while, the platypus gravity filter because it would just flow into that bladder that I used. So I eliminated the Sawyer, um, like bladders and having to squeeze and all that. But there weren't that many trees that on the beginning of the PCT. So I just decided that it was easier to go to the bottles and drink through it. And I don't like to sit there and squeeze and squeeze, but I thought about carrying a, another two liter bladder just for dirty water. So when I'm in a long carry, uh, it's something that's compact. It doesn't take up as much space as like four smart water bottles, you know, and then I can always pour that into one of my two liter or not two liter, one liter uh, smart water bottles that I drink out of. But I just find it easier to just drink through the Sawyer. Um, I normally carry like a little Gatorade bottle or a 0.7 smart water bottle that I can squeeze fresh water into it if I want to so I can just chug water or to do a drink mix. Um, but I just hate sitting there and squeezing and squeezing and squeezing and it's just so I, I don't. I just drink through it and yeah I'll squeeze, squeeze it when I cook because um, normally I don't bring things to a full boil for long enough to you know really treat the water. So anyway um, I definitely think you that everyone figures out what works for them and I've just decided to ditch the bladders, but I am thinking about bringing one just to carry extra dirty water. See, so. Did you consider z Pack's Arc Blast instead of Arc Haul, and how do you like the Arc Haul? Okay, um, so if I'm not mistaken, the Arc Blast is pretty similar to the Arc Haul. I think it has, maybe it's a little bit lighter. Um, you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong here, but I think the main reason I went with the hull is because it had a higher uh, load capacity. So it could carry more weight and I guess was designed to carry more weight than say, you know, the, the arc blast. So, and with longer food carries, you know, if I was just going out on the weekends, uh, I would have probably gone with the blast or like a three day haul. But when you're carrying food, potentially, you know, six, seven days of food, then, uh, then yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably reaching more closer to the 40 pound range. And, uh, so that's, that's why I went with the arc haul, but I think they're pretty much the same. And I do like the arc haul. Um, actually the back panel, the mesh is kind of starting to, um, tear on mine a little bit. So I contacted Z packs. Um, they have wonderful customer service by the way. Uh, but I mean, it has been, on a full through hike now. So, you know, and I think most of their gear is warrant warranted for sure for a through hike, uh, which is, I mean, you really can't ask for more than that. Yes. Osprey packs are going to last longer. Uh, they are heavier duty, but they are heavier, you know, um, than an, than like an ultralight pack. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, trade-offs, but, but I do like the arc haul a lot. So how far ahead is Perk? Perk is actually with Riga right now. Um, so Riga came and got him from the Copper Mountain area, which is like, I want to say a hundred and uh, I can't remember exactly. Maybe he's around 1200 something. So he's probably like 160 miles ahead of me, something like that. If I had to, if I had to guess, um, so yeah. Uh, so I, I would say he's about eight days ahead and I'm not zeroing here, although it's going to be a short mileage day. Uh, well, I'll be zeroing if I can't get a ride out, but, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, so Riga's going to hold him hostage for a day or two and hopefully I can catch up with him faster. Uh, do you do different material for Patreon and YouTube? I don't know if I for sure understand what you mean by that, Fred. So... For YouTube, you know, I put out the regular videos. Um, for Patreon, like, I do these live Q&As with y'all. I don't do live Q&As on the main stream on YouTube. Now, some of these Q&As that we do, like, they're recorded. YouTube records them as they're happening. And I'll publish them later, but nobody gets to, like, you know, directly interact or anything like that. So, you know, I get to answer y'all's specific questions that you have. 
so people on YouTube might get to see that later, but they don't get to like, you know, specifically um, ask questions and, and wild, you know, it's not live. So like y'all know where I'm at and what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. And you know, you have the most, I guess, up to date information while YouTube is like several weeks behind. So uh, I guess the content is sometimes the same, but like, I don't share everything, you know, on the posts that I do on, on Patreon. I don't post that stuff. Like if you'll notice on Instagram or Facebook, other platforms, um, I might show a picture and put a quote with it or a thought or, you know, maybe what was happening. But again, that stuff's like delayed. So, um, and most of the time I don't post the same exact pictures, you know, that I do with y'all, but it just depends. So, um, so it's a little different, I guess. Pixie, do you save all of your raw video footage or just the final edit videos trying to figure out which way to go with mine? Um, so Aaron has an external hard drive that has all of the raw footage. Uh, the only thing as far as raw footage goes that we don't save um, are like when I do the informational videos. Because um, if it got cut out of that, it probably don't want it. But you know, like the outtakes video from the PCT, some of that stuff wasn't in the regular video series, so it was able to be included because we still had the raw footage. Um, but you can do, you know, you save it on Dropbox, and if you have somebody at home that can pull it from Dropbox onto an external hard drive for you, that would be cool. Um, that way it stays, you know, cleaned off for you. Do your part-time jobs take you back when you get back home so I know you were substitute teaching and then I was also waitressing, bartending and um, doing several part-time jobs. And Jim was asking, do you, like, do they take you back or do you have to find new part-time jobs? So I worked at a restaurant, Niffers, um, and all of my siblings, uh, well, except the youngest, Montana, because she's a rebel. Um, so she uh, hasn't worked there, but the rest of us have all worked there at some point. And so they actually... Uh, will take me back. You know, I'm friends with the, the managers and um, they're just a, a, a great place to work. So uh, it's a great restaurant. And um, so, yeah, that, that'll take me back. Substitute teaching, that's kind of a come and go thing. You know, they expect that. Um, they know what I'm doing because I'm subbing at the high school that my mom works at and that, you know, I went to high school at. Um, so, and he asked, do I still need them with Patreon and YouTube and everything or uh, am I making enough through that? So, Obviously, Patreon and the channel are doing better dur during a through hike than in the off time, right? Because, you know, people want to support when you are actively doing something and people want to, there are more people interested in watching a through hike than like watching informational videos because there are more people who are interested in it that might not actually be interested in backpacking themselves, you know? So things tend to dwindle. Uh, when I'm not actually on the trail. And so there, you know, have been part-time jobs that I've picked up to kind of help supplement everything. Um, I'm hoping this next summer I'm going to be filling in all the fire closures that were on the PCT. So um, while I'm out there doing that, you know, I'm hoping that, that it'll be enough uh, and I can work in between doing some of that. But I also want to write uh, this next summer some. I want to um, get like a, a PCT and CDT like how-to guide like I did for the AT, but I also want to write a story uh, for each of the trails. So um, so we'll see. If I need them, I know that they're there and, uh, and that's, that is a really good feeling. What are your thoughts if not using waterproof shoes for ice and snow? Um, so I don't use, I just wear my regular trail runners. Now, it's not actively going to be snowing for several days where I'm at, you know, that maybe that would be different. But even in the Sierra Nevada, when I was in snow almost, you know, all day, um, it just, it was warm out. It wasn't cold. So if you're hiking in snow and it's cold, then, you know, you're, you're probably going to want to do something different. I can't really give you good advice for that. I mean, I was in Washington when it was snowing and cold, but it, it didn't last, you know, it was, um, a few days of it and then it kind of melted away and uh, so I was able to just kind of suck it up and, and deal with wet trail runners and wet feet um, and when you're out in it for several days anyway especially if it's snow mixed with rain um, 
the rain's going to get down in your boots, even if they're Gore-Tex. If they're Gore-Tex, they're going to take longer to dry out. Uh, so I would not be the best one to give you advice for hiking in cold snow rain mixture for several days on end. You know, it's just, I've always been, um, I'm out there for a few days and then I'm in a town and, and most of the time it's not just a steady bad weather thing. Um, and even on the AT when it was so rainy, it was warm in the summertime, you know, so, um, but yeah, I just do the trail runners. The only thing I have noticed is if I wear ankle socks in the snow, my ankle, like my Achilles back there tends to get tore up. It's like snow will get down in there and it acts like sandpaper and rubs against the socks. So if I wear higher ankle socks, I don't have that issue. So gaiters, you know, would probably do a good job. Um, but yeah, I like to have shoes that my, that, that can air out and dry quickly. So, uh, but again, most of the time when I'm in the snow, it's warm or it's just not going to last that long. So I'm sorry. I don't have a better answer for you. Love your videos, especially the introspective times at the end always makes me think in a good way. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I, you know, sometimes I'm like, Oh, am I saying too much or am I sharing too much? You know, um, this last stretch, uh, and, and I mean, Aaron always, you know, filters, like he always goes through and, and, um, and picks what he wants to use. But you know, this last stretch and, and I didn't, I haven't told y'all about it, but I had a friend who, um, committed suicide right like not too long before I started the CDT and that has really been on my mind a, a lot um this this whole trail uh I I think about it probably at least once a day you know if not that often than every other day and um and I don't know about y'all but I guess everyone deals with things differently when they lose people but um I tend to dream about people and so I've you know dreamed about it a lot and stuff and it's just one of those like, oh, could I have done more and yada, yada, but I won't get into it because then I'll just start crying. So anyway, um, that was something that kind of hit me more on this last stretch and, uh, that I kind of talked about a little bit. So I don't know if, you know, Aaron will include that or not, but, um, but yeah, so I think that when you're out hiking, especially when you're alone and hiking, you just have so much more time to reflect and think about things and work through things that maybe your mind thought that you had dealt with, but you hadn't really. And that's why it's surfacing again. So, um, so I think it's good. And I, I mean, even if that's a walk around the block or, you know, whatever, I think allowing your mind to do that, not constantly distracting yourself with what's going on on Facebook or what's going on with my phone, or let me talk to a friend or turn on the radio. Or like, sometimes you just need to be quiet and think, and it, I think does a lot for you. But, um, but anyway, so thank you. I'm glad that you enjoy that part. I know some folks think that I just ramble and ramble, but like, I don't know. It's, I've actually thought on this stuff that I'm rambling about most of the time. <laughs> uh, Doug says, have you yet considered your post CDT plans? Yes. Um, so I'm thinking that next summer, um, because, and I, I've mentioned this before, the triple crown, like the people who give the triple crown award say that you must have continuous footsteps on all three trails. So I'm good on the AT and I'm hopefully going to be good on the CDT because I'm really going to be very adamant about keeping continuous footpath. Now on the PCT, there were the fire closures and I was very much like stick to all the trail miles that I can get. Um, so I have some closure areas that I either need to walk through if they're open now, or I need to walk roads, whatever I have to do to make my footsteps actually connect. Um, so I will be doing that next summer and my mom is off in the summer, so I think she's going to come with me. So I'm hoping to, um, capture, I mean, I'm sure she's going to be a little embarrassed, but like, you know, her using a stove for the first time and learning. So like maybe some of the people who are also just learning and just getting into it can, can learn something from it. And then, um, I'll be, you know, capturing just the journey in general and filling in those holes and um hopefully get better footage of crater lake you know and like oregon when it's not smoky and um so there will be you know more videos next summer it won't be a full through hike but it'll be pieces of the pct that i didn't get great shots of before or didn't get any shots because it was closed so and then you know i'm thinking the trail in new zealand normally is done in the winter time but I don't know if it'll be this coming winter or if I'll wait until um, the next 
so I'm not sure yet. But first things first, you know, fill in those um, fire closures so I can submit my paperwork for a Triple Crown. And they don't know. I mean, I could just submit it anyway, but I can't do that and feel good about myself. So, do you run in any hikers who sleep on the ground under a tarp instead of a tent? Um, I, I've run into that more on the other trails. Um, I haven't really camped with a whole lot of people on this trail, so I don't know, uh, really what they're using to, to, you know, for tents and stuff like that for their shelters. Um, but there are definitely some people who, who do tarps. Um, like it, even I've seen like the regular old blue, like, you know, utility Home Depot tarps and I've seen like the ultralight nice tarps and there are people who use that as their primary shelter or they'll cowboy camp most of the time but they've got the tarp in case it rains so um so that's that does happen uh did aaron get new shoes uh yes he did um he got some new shoes while we were off uh for graduation they were they were very holy in the top the bottoms were good tread was still good you know but it just had his feet had busted through the top is your camera 100 percent waterproof my phone is waterproof according to Apple, um, you know, and I've submerged it some, but, uh, but you know, I haven't like went diving way down or anything like that with it. So just for what I've used it for, it's been fine. What's the word on the stove? Do you love it? Oh, my little BRS stove. Um, I am a fan. It's a little temperamental. Sometimes when I go to turn it off, the flame goes more. And when I try to turn it on more, it kind of goes, I don't know, it's weird. Um, it's temperamental. So, but I did wash it on accident and it's still working. So I can't really complain. Hey Dixie, first time I caught your Q&A live. Awesome, welcome. Uh, I don't know what to ask, but saying hi, I just wanna let you know that you are really inspirational. I watch your videos every day to motivate me. Thank you, I, that, I really appreciate you saying that. And I'm glad that you said hello, even if you don't have a question. And if you have a question later, you know, just, drop it on a on a comment or something like that but anyway thank you for watching the videos and um and thank all of y'all for being here today i'm impressed that we have this many folks um, saw the down trees in the video my pnt hike was cut short from an injury and had so many down trees and fell more than i wanted uh what's your feelings on all the down trees on trail uh i will say that they make me extremely thankful for um trail maintenance like for the trail maintenance crews and the folks that come and do all that stuff I mean I'm so thankful every time I walk through down trees I'm just like and this is why we should show more appreciation for trail maintenance crews so um yeah I'm sorry that your PNT hike was cut short that's I'm so sorry about that that's awful and I hope that you're healing up um and you're doing all right now but uh yeah it's it's bad it, it's really it's it's it will slow you down more than steep grade i mean it's just a jungle gym so um but yeah when i pass through trees and i see them cut and spread apart and the trail is open i'm like thank you to whoever put this effort in so um yeah so i hate to hear about that but yeah blowdowns are are a buzz kill for sure uh, I think through hiking has a tremendous life review component. Don't you agree? I think you're able to express this in your videos, which seems to separate you from others. Thank you, um, Philip. I, you know, I, I just, I feel like if people see the good and the bad and, and, and to me, the good isn't just like, oh, I'm on this awesome trail and I'm doing awesome things and, you know, whatever. It's like what's going on in here and what's going on in here and, there's more to it than just what can be seen, you know? So I try to find a way to, to share that. Um, animal attacks are all the rage on the news lately. Have you considered carrying bear spray full time? No. Um, I think I'll, I'll carry it when I get to, um, Grizz country, but before that, I'm just, it's not going to do it. Hey Dixie, join late. Your video quality has been great and inspiring. Have you been happy with your clothing selections? Yes. Yes, I have. So the clothes that I have, um, I've been happy with. I did go to like a thinner smart wool shirt for sleeping in. Um, and there have been times where I've thought about getting that warmer one sent back, but I haven't done it yet. So uh, I love following your trail. Just join the Q&A now. Did you hear about the family doing a through hike of the AT? Do you think you'll do something like that with your future kids? Oh yeah. I think my future kids are going to be like TV. Why would I want to sit and be still and watch that? I mean, probably not, right? Your kids are the opposite of what you think they'll be usually, right? So, 
Um, I hope that mine actually liked outdoors because they're going to be spending some time in it. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking like, you know, I don't know, floating the Mississippi or um, definitely hiking. Uh, just, I don't know. I'm not sure what, the, what that will bring. But yes, my imaginary children who I can't wait to be a mom to someday uh, are in for an adventure, I think. So I'm definitely not going to be, oh, well, I have kids now, so I can't do anything anymore. So um, yeah. And, and maybe that's where this channel will trans transition when I hit that stage of my life. We'll see. Uh, Dixie, what advice would you give a newbie regarding the snow? I want to hike either the PCT or AT next year and the snow worries me since this will be my very first hike at 47. Okay, let's see. Um, the AT, you're not gonna encounter as much snow as you will on the PCT. The PCT, it's gonna depend on how much snow you have this year um honestly though you just take it one step at a time and you know i had no snow experience when i went through the sierra nevada i do think that probably a lot of the people hiking in the sierra nevada last year in the high snow year probably had no business doing it myself included um but the thing is you can always turn around and go back so if you if you get to a spot where you're like i'm uncomfortable i don't like this you can flip up somewhere else um and come back to that section later when there's less snow and it may be a low snow year and then you know everyone's going to be doing the same thing you are and by the time you get to that point you're going to be conditioned 700 miles in if you're a northbound um pct hiker. so i wouldn't let the snow be what makes you choose between the at and the pct you know let it be do you want a lot of views or do you want like the more social aspect or do you you know um look at some other things but i wouldn't let the snow be the deal breaker either way for you so um but you know you just take it a step at a time and it's not like suddenly you're in the desert and the next thing you know there's a 20 foot wall of snow you know it's it's it is gradual and you'll know when okay i've reached the point where i don't feel comfortable with this i don't like this or you might get in there and be like i love snow trucking and you might find some huge interest that you never thought you would have and then like you want to winter camp all the time you know you just don't ever know so um it's just one step at a time and I think either trail, uh, you'll be fine. There was a lady on the AT the year I hiked that was 71 or 72 uh, bluebird. So at 47, you're a young whippersnapper compared to, you know, how she probably felt. So, um, so I think you'll be just fine. What do you recommend for foot care? Do you air out your feet every time you break? Yeah, I, I do air out my feet. Okay, let's put it this way. If I'm hiking in the Sierra Nevada in the year that I did where my feet are wet all the time. Every single time I take a break, I'm pulling my socks off. Now this trail so far where my feet haven't been wet, I pull my shoes and socks off at lunch. So just like one time throughout the day, cause they're not like soaked, you know, the whole day. So I just don't want to get trench foot basically. And, and it is nice to let them breathe. So, um, and then I try to wipe them off with baby wipes or, you know, if I have extra water, um, rinse them off with water just to get like that salt off of them because I, I feel like that can help cause blisters, you know, and um, You know rub them if you feel like it uh, Definitely helps stretching them. Um, but normally I just try to make sure to air them out at breaks um, and and Then just wash them off at night before I go to bed. I put on clean socks to sleep in so um, and then every about two days, I swap socks. See, it looks like towns are a bit further apart and off trail. Can you talk about your resupply strategies and how much food you're having to carry? Um, so the most food I've carried so far, I think is like six days uh, and probably ended up doing the stretch in like, five, well, no, the Gila. The Gila, I think we carried like eight days just in case, but we ended up going into reserve because of the filter issue. So, um, but yeah, they are further apart. Um, than like the AT, for example, but I just, I look ahead and if it looks like there's going to be nothing, then I might have a box sent. But if it looks like this town, there's going to be a Walmart or a town where there's a, you know, a decent grocery store, then I just resupply there. It's just easier to not have to worry with post office hours and, and stuff like that. So is the extra room in the duplex worth it? Z-Pax has a new Plexamid. I'm considering selling my duplex and getting it. I'm curious if you would consider a smaller version, given your experience. You know, I haven't tried a smaller one, but for the weight savings, I've actually thought about it. Um, I do like having the duplex, knowing that if somebody wants to come camping with me, that I that I have that. But honestly, you know, I Aaron has a 
the Soulplex, and he likes it. I mean, he does say that, you know, it's small, but, um, but after I borrowed that, that one person tent on the end of the PCT, I actually, um, I could live with it, you know, and I've, and I've toyed with the idea of going to the smaller one. So, um, so yeah, it might be worth it to sell the duplex and try it out. And if not, then sell that and get a new duplex, I guess. <laughs> I mean, you might lose out on some cash there, but you know, I mean, I think if you've always had a one person, you probably it wouldn't bother you. But since you've had a duplex, I don't know. And I do like having the two doors. So, but it's trade off, you know, if, if you want to lighten your pack, then go for it. So, and it can't hurt to to try it. Uh, question about drugs and pot on the AT. I don't like that kind of culture and I want to stay as far away as I can. I hate being around smoke from it. Do you find it overwhelming pervasive? Um, so it happens. Uh, there is marijuana on every trail I've ever hiked. I definitely have seen it, but I've never had anybody like take a puff and then like, you know, blow up my face. Um, I find that, you know, it is among this generation, like smoking cigarettes. You know, that's the, the way that they view it, feel about it. Um, and I certainly don't think that you should be forced to be around cigarette smoke or marijuana smoke or, you know, whatever that you don't want to. And I think just like with a cigarette, if you were sitting next to somebody and they were smoking, you know, you could get up and go. Or, for example, if you're sitting in the shelter and they're smoking, you could say, hey, could you not do that? in here in the shelter you know I've got all my stuff here and I don't really want to breathe that um you know it's just a politeness thing I think if you approach it like that and not how dare you smoke pot in front of me you know I mean and the thing is anybody that I've ever been around that's smoking pot or cigarettes or anything like that um they have always said uh will this bother you if I smoke around you and normally they're polite now of course there are jerks in every walk of life you know um, so you, you might find a, a, a jerk that just does it. And so you can be polite to them. And if they, that doesn't work, then, you know, go from there kind of thing. But, um, so it exists, uh, just like any other alcohol, tobacco, you know, whatever. Um, but I just, I don't think it's as much of an issue as, people make it out to be, if that makes sense. Um, so I think that you can definitely avoid it. The family of five kids and two parents that I hiked with, um, you know, people would do it around, you know, the general vicinity. And like, she was always very much like, well, kids are smoking pot and that's a drug. And you know, you probably shouldn't do that. And now you see how it makes them act when they do it or, you know, whatever. So, um, so yeah, it, it definitely happens, but children were able to be around it and the parents not freak out so generally people are polite enough but. uh hi dixie how many calories are you consuming per day and how much does your daily food supply weigh approximately i have no idea i'm sorry um you know i thought maybe i should like and maybe i should do that i should do a day where i just like add up everything i eat but it fluctuates so much it depends on the heat when it's hot i don't really want to eat um and so I, I really don't know. I have no idea to be completely honest. Um, I wake up, I have two packets of oatmeal, an instant breakfast and a coffee. Then I have second breakfast while I'm hiking and that could be anything from a pop tart to spam to um, uh, crackers, you know, uh, and then like a baby food squeeze packet. And then for lunch, I normally have like a pasta sides or a rice sides. And then for afternoon, break, you know, I might have like Cheez-Its or pepperoni or, you know, just some kind of snack like that. Nuts. And then normally I have another snack again before, uh, dinner, um, sometime. And then for dinner, I normally do another like mac and cheese or, um, pasta sides or rice sides or so. I don't know if that helps at all. Um, I just don't know how many calories all that is, but I would say on average when I did like a uh, video on like food supply I weighed I was like okay this would be my food for a three-day stretch and I weighed it and it came out to that rule of thumb that everyone says about two pounds per day so of course it fluctuates when I first start out I'm not eating as much compared to after I've been hiking for a while so um, so maybe I'll try to add up 
calories one of these days and uh and give you a better idea um how many liters can you filter before back flushing your sawyer i just back oh, i'm so glad you said that. i need to do that while i'm here in town but uh i i just back flush my um filter every town so i'm not sure how many liters i run through it but it'll be about five to seven days of hiking uh and it definitely gets lower flow um you know towards the end of that stretch but then once i get to town i back flush it it's it runs much better so and it depends on your water sources too when you're up in the high sierra or you know in the san juans and you've got that clear pretty water flow and it's a lot less particulate matter in that than like a cow pond so, so um and you can back flush on trail you know as long as you've filtered some water into a clean bottle and then use that to back flush um so you know uh, but I've not tested how many liters I can flow through before it completely clogs, you know. Uh, I, I haven't had that issue, so. Uh, have Snickers lost their luster for you? You know, I haven't been as obsessed with Snickers on this on this trip. I mean, I definitely, they're still very good. Um, but uh, peanut M&Ms have kind of started to take my heart a little bit. Uh, but yeah, there's not been any food that's just um that i'm obsessed with this time i think i'm trying to mix it up so i don't get as sick of stuff but um yeah snickers haven't lost their luster but they just yeah i'm not i'm not craving them as badly on this trip let's see ed says my wife loves your accent uh what motivates you to keep going just canada like um i get very determined when i get something in my mind i'm gonna do it you know and so it's just kind of like blinders and just go um but I don't know, sometimes I wonder that myself. You know, a lot of times it's y'all. Um, knowing that I've got folks cheering me on is is very much a motivator, you know? And knowing that when I get to town, I get to be like, oh, guess what happened this stretch? Or, um, so I've, I really appreciate that. And I mean, I know most of y'all I haven't met, but I do feel like clo close with y'all, you know, like a, a friendship as much as you can, I guess. Um, without meeting somebody in person. And I mean, I tell y'all stuff, <laughs> like we all know more about my hike and this last stretch than my mom does, you know? So, um, so anyway, yeah, having, having cheerleaders definitely helps. So I, I really appreciate um, y'all doing that for me. Uh, have uh, you ever experienced altitude sickness? I hiked San Jacinto this past weekend and had altitude sickness pretty badly on the second night when I camped at 9,700. Um, Michelle, I don't think that I have, I was wondering if that wasn't what was going on with me when I got back on trail and it's, and it could be, um, cause I did have some headaches, but I wasn't like throwing up or anything. I did feel nauseous. Um, so no, cause normally on these through hikes, you start at like on the PCT and the CDT on the only two that you would get altitude sickness, which does anyone know why they call it altitude sickness? Cause to me, it should be elevation sickness. Altitude is the height from the earth when you're like in an aircraft, right? And elevation is when you're like above sea level on the earth, right? Am I, am I saying this right? So anyway, to me, it should be elevation sickness because altitude is like when you're up and that might even be above sea level, but you know what I mean? Like when you're off the earth. Anyway, um, so yeah, Perk and I talk about that. We call it elevation sickness. So anyway, altitude sickness, elevation sickness, whatever. Um, so normally you're going from like 5,000 or something that doesn't generally bother people and you gradually get up to that elevation so you have time to adjust. Um, but I definitely have heard of people getting that. And I've heard of people not having an issue with it and then suddenly the next time they do. So then some people always have an issue. Um, I, I'm sure that you can read up on things that could help. Um, they make this stuff and I don't know if it actually helps or not, but it's called, uh, oh, what is that called? Um, oh man, I can't remember, but it's a little drink mix thing and Aaron gave me some of it. Uh, it's like acclimate, acclimate, I think is what it's called. Anyway, um, so I took some of that and I just, you know, sometimes it might help just to come down to a lower elevation, stay in a hotel and go back up. I know that might not be a possibility for what you were doing, but uh, but no, I've not really experienced that, but I've, I've heard that it's pretty terrible. And I think it's important to stay very hydrated. I have to remind myself of that on this trail because it's cool, the wind is blowing, you know, I'm not hot, so I'm not really thirsty. And when I'm cold, I don't want to drink. And so um, I think it's important to, to be hydrated and, and stay hydrated. But um, I'm sorry you experienced that. that. I know that can't be fun. 
Uh, Fred says, I appreciate you and all your past videos on YouTube, and I think I've watched every one and just recently decided to support people, support two people on Patreon. Best investment ever. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that, you know, this channel led you to support some other folks, and uh, that's, that's wonderful. And, I mean, it blows my mind how supportive y'all have been of me. Like, I, I just... I can't thank you enough um, for everything that y'all have done for me. So, and Nora says, agree with Fred. Awesome. How do you like the HMG pack? So right now I'm using the Z packs arc haul, but I use the HMG for part of the PCT hike. And that's actually the pack that Aaron is using right now. He's borrowing that um, from me. And so uh, it rubbed my back raw after a while. I don't know why I was just randomly in the Sierra Nevada. It started rubbing my back, but Aaron hasn't had any issues with that. So, and he likes it. Um, it doesn't have load lifters, so I would suggest your base weight being pretty light if you use that pack, but it's, it's a good pack. And has Montana started the t-shirt design? So my little sister Montana, uh, is gonna do t-shirts. She just got back from camp, um, like a week ago. So, uh, I'm going to message her today to see if I can get a fire lit under her and get her to start doing some stuff like that. Um, I'm amazed at how many people have requested a t-shirt. So I, I'm, we will definitely be doing that. Uh, and I know I keep saying that and it hadn't happened, but it's going to happen. How's the InReach working out and which one do you have? I have the um, InReach Explorer Plus and it's working wonderfully. Uh, I really love that I have that and I wish I had had it sooner. It's, it brings so much peace of mind being able to, you know, keep in touch with my family, knowing that I can call for help if somebody gets hurt. Um, and then also... Uh, you know, like when my filter broke, I had my mom send one and I wouldn't have had service to, to talk to her about that. So, all right, y'all. Well, thank y'all so much for being here. Um, thank you so much for your support. Uh, and not just financial, of course, but like your cheering me on, your encouragement. And, you know, somebody asked earlier, what helps you stay motivated? And honestly, that, that really does help me so much knowing that um, that y'all believe in me because you get so many people like, oh, you're coming through here late, aren't you? Or, oh, you'll never make it. Or, oh, you're just a girl or, you know, whatever. And so, um, just having so many people, uh, behind me really means a lot to me. So thank y'all so much. And, uh, all right, y'all. Bye.